Hey, what's up, Matteo? Um, you were like, hey, stream some Fallout. And I was like, you know what? Mm, do something a little bit different. I, uh, I've been on a real hot rod kick recently um, in terms of watching shows like the British show Wheeler Dealers, Top Gear, um, Chasing Classic Cars, etc. Um, I just really love hot rods and things and super awesome new cars. They're just such a cool example of art and engineering. Um, and I've been digging for some time Forza Horizon 3. I've not um, uh, played it much in recent weeks or months, but I wanted to get back to it, give it a little go again, figure I'd record a video, see if I could uh, get you uh, in the, in the uh, racing car tweaking game type of groove. Um, share a little bit of that. Um, I also am highly interested in spending some more time with Project Cars 2, especially since it has VR support. I wish this game did, um, but um, yeah, I got Project Cars 2 on a real good deal during the Steam sale. Uh, so yeah, I'm just looking through my uh, my library of cars here so far. I'm, uh, I've am i completed some good portion of this game. Um, I don't know, maybe a third or a half or something like that. Um, so let's see, I got a Oldsmobile Hearst 442. This game doesn't really railroad you. It's it's open world. Um, it doesn't really force you to go through like the smaller, crappier cars first. You kind of just it can, you just do events and do different things, unlock different cars. There's also an online auction house, which is actually pretty cool for cars. There's so many cars in the game. You can you can get them and then tweak them, upgrade them, paint them, and then put them on um, an auction house, which lets you get more in-game currency to purchase more cars and uh, do different upgrades and things. It's kind of neat. It doesn't completely ru ruin the game, you know. Um, just depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, the really awesome cars are still ridiculously expensive. You can't, like, break the game by buying a sweet car um, because there's each event, you know, has different classes. This is it's not like you can just take a McLaren into a, you know, 1980s road rally or something like that. But um, so you got... Um, uh, so it's kind of like play wherever you want to play. Um, so on this sheet, it tells you kind of some numbers about the performance. I think it's from 0 to 10. Um, C, this C here is the class, and the 536 is like a cumulative performance number. I think it really ranges from a, like maybe like 100 to 1,000 or something, depending on how, how insane the car is. The base car is plus whatever you've done to it. So this does take into effect upgrades you've done. Um, the CR is a credit. I think that's uh, probably what it's worth. Um, T, I'm not sure what that means. Can't remember. Classic muscle is sort of the category of the car, um, rear wheel drive. So we'll just glance through here a little bit. Got an Abarth Fiat, um, a little rally car. Aston Martin V12 Vantage S 2013, sort of James Bondish. You see that has a that has a 817 performance right there. Bentley Continental GT, um, awesome, insane luxury sports. Uh, you know, a preferred ride of uh, many pro athletes. BMW M4, um, pretty high end, not their super high end, but uh, recent, uh, you know, sort of recent model. Uh, Z Drive, oh, Z4, um, 2011, uh, kind of a two seater, smaller BMW. 2005 M3. I, I like this body style a lot. I would not rule it out that I might be interested in one of these someday, potentially a convertible, maybe a little newer. Um, old BMW M5, just retro saloons, just for the heck of it. The Isetta, which is a little refrigerator like thing. This looks like it has, this has two wheels. I think a lot of them have one, three wheels, just one in the back. And then you actually open the front like a refrigerator door. And climb into it, um, and the steering wheel kind of folds out and then folds back in your face. Um, I imagine you would be dead from a fender bender in this, um, but it's pretty cool, kind of Euro for their tight streets and horrible emissions laws and gas prices. Got to have the Escalade to roll like a pimp. Um, CTS V Coupe, I mean, that's like a really high end Cadillac sports car they did. Um, probably, yeah, in the $60,000, $70,000 range a few years ago. Caterham, I think, is like a British, um, mainly track car, but I think it's also road legal. Um, so it's kind of cool, open top. Uh, one of the more recent Corvettes, I think they're getting really cool with these. Um, that's another potential ambition car. Uh, 53 Corvette, I believe it's the first uh, year 
of the Corvette. Charger RT. I did this. Uh, I think Ed Vin Diesel was playing this game with me, so I, we were like, hey, let's just get the uh, the Vin Diesel um, Fast and Furious car and uh, trick it out, kind of like uh, Dom uh, Toretto had in the movie. So we kind of painted it black and got some wheels. And I guess we didn't do the big like blower uh, through the hood, but uh, there's some limits to what you can do. Uh, Charger Daytona Hemi, um, super rare now, um, big in uh, NASCAR races in the uh, 70s, also available to the public uh, in a very similar form. Dino Ferrari, uh, another type of old 70s Ferrari, it's becoming popular uh, recently, uh, going up in price. Ford F-150 Raptor, because Murica, why not? I mean, it's like an Xbox tribute thing, I don't know, it might just been like a free giveaway or something. Uh, Ford Woody, thought those were cool. Did a couple of model kits when I was a kid. Um, Holden HQ Montero, 1973. Not sure what that is. May have just won it. Or uh, so there's all they also have these barn finds in the game. Um, what is Toggle? We've got an up up arrow says Toggle. Oh, it's showing you the different stats about the car. Um, sometimes there's uh, these barn finds where you have to go seek out. It'll give you like an area, um, and it uh it'll like an area on the map you have to kind of it's kind of backwoods you got to kind of find a house or a barn or some area and uh, there'll be like a super there'll be like a rare desirable car it's kind of beat up there you discover it there's a little cut scene um and then it um it goes back to your garage and then it takes a while and then um it um uh they um you repair it and refurbish it, and then then you get it later, and you can you can play with it and drive it. Um, probably this truck, probably something similar. Um, early '90s NSX. Always thought that was pretty cool. Jaguar XJ220, another amazing car. You know, poster type of material for when you're a kid. Uh, ja early '90s Jaguar XJS, just kind of cool. Something I saw on Top Gear or some hot rod show. That was pretty neat. Um, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. I was considering a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee of this generation. Not necessarily the SRT. It's super expensive. Um, but I uh, thought that was kind of a neat SUV for plowing through. The, with this Australian map, there's a lot of backwoods and things you can plow through. Uh, Willie's Jeep. Uh, pretty popular form of World War II Jeep. Um, there were a lot of extras and surplus and things that were in crates. People sometimes find them still in crates that you can kind of build and, and are brand new basically after the, all those years. Lamborghini Urus. Uh, this is, I may have unlocked this through winning something. I, it's really stupid in my opinion. It's a Lamborghini SUV. The wheels look too big. Um, why the hell would you ever want this? It's insane. Now the Aventador LP 700, uh, that's something I would want. Ridiculous, um, high end Lamborghini. Um, Range Rover, kind of just a cool high-end luxury, um, SUV, uh, for some, you know, I kind of tricked it out a little bit with the wheels and the stripes, um, give it a little bit of a military paint scheme. Um, that's another good one for plowing through the backwoods. Uh, Lexus IS450, 350, kind of just cool, high-performance sports sedan. Lotus, um, just a neat, um, uh, kind of track type thing. High, super high performance. Mazda MX-5, um, mainly for women and gays. Uh, another Mazda for said demographics. Um, Mercedes E63 AMG, I mean, just a really, their AMG um, is their super high performance um, versions of some of their sedans and things. Um, this would be an awesome type of vehicle to have someday. Uh, you know, you get luxury kind of sedan type form factor with ridiculous sports car, throaty V8, screaming, um, you know, tire shredding monster uh, that you can take to a high class business meeting. Uh, 280 SL, so it was pretty cool. 60s Mercedes, they had some pretty cool, um, pretty cool uh, looks back then. Uh, here's a Mercury that I kind of, uh, I really like 40s Mercuries. You can't really modify the body in these games, but. I kind of gave it like a hot rod matte paint job with some white wall tires, some mean black wheels. Uh, really like Mercs, man. I really like Mercs from this generation. They just look like a, a badass, sweet-ass hot rod. 
Lancer Evo, kind of a fun rally type modern car. Takes screaming down some of the dirt roads. Nissan, Nissan Skyline GTR is sort of like um, uh, the um, Paul um, uh, Paul Walker's car in um, in um, Fast and Furious. Uh, here's an old Skyline. I think I won it in some um, challenge or something. Plymouth Prowler, just a neat thing from the early 2000s. Uh, kind of a weird thing that Plymouth did. Um, kind of a cool looking kind of modern hot rod type of thing. Reliant Super Van 3. I mean, look at that. That looks like it wants to just flip over just sitting there. Uh, 2013 Viper GTS. Well, it's, they keep going back and forth and making the Viper some years and not the other years. Um, they, they just keep kind of starting and stopping the production. Ridiculously high performance. Sunbeam Tiger. It's just another neat rarity. Um, I think I pulled that out of a barn. And a Toyota FJ40, kind of like the, the ancestor to the FJ Cruiser. Um, so yeah, I'll just pick something that I feel like driving. Um, M3 is pretty cool. Corvette. You know, Ferraris. Tight. Um, maybe just a solid sports car. Uh, I mean, the Viper is pretty awesome. Kind of out of control fast. Let's see, Lotus 211. There are a couple, a couple of super high-end, a few super high-end um, uh, cars in this game that are just like the, um, is it called the, um, uh, I'm kind of forgetting one of the brands now, but it's called the 1-1, one -one, not the Koenigsegg maybe? Um, that are just so fast, it's hard to believe they actually exist. Uh, they have like two seconds, so zero to 60 times, and they'll go like 250 miles an hour, and this game really imparts a pretty good sense of speed. So let's do this Honda NSX. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fast. Not too crazy, though. So hit select. Um, we'll do get in. Well, I did add to favorites, um, whatever that's sort of next. I'll just remove from favorites, but I'll do get in car. And then what it does is kind of it's... Would you like to have this car delivered to a nearby location for 10,000 credits? Oh, I'm not at a festival site. Okay. Because your festival sites are like your home bases, but I'm really near one, so check this out. I'm in this, um, I'm in this Hearst Old. So I'll just drive back to the festival. You kind of like upgrade your festival sites. You kind of like this celebration of cars and auto culture. This is like your home base. You can drive in here. You can build other festival sites. I'll just move the mouse here. You can kind of take a look around. Oh, I smashed this one up a little bit. It's pretty cool realistic damage. Um, it's uh, I have it set on per, on kind of simulation damage. So you uh, if you mess your car up really bad, you um, it starts really um, slagging. And um, you have to either warp and pay back to... A, home and pay credits or just kind of limp back uh, for free so let's see enter the site automatically repairs for free when you get here but I just wanted to switch over to the NSX so auction house probably do a little bit of that at some point maybe not when uh, maybe not as part of this video but my cars I have bought some of these online auction house it's fun to get on there and just Put some credits down, put a bid in, see uh, you know if you can pick up a good deal. And so, yeah, what it does is it populates the world with um, uh, it populates the world with um, cars, kind of in a similar in the similar class to what you're using, and you can pretty much do any event with um, with any car, unless it's like a uh, an event that has specific cars attached to it. So I'll just go find something. Um, let's see here. Danger sign. It's like a thing you have to jump. Uh, speed trap. You got to try to blow by it really fast and get get caught on the speed camera. 
I have a 90 mile an hour. There's a 170 miles an hour. Probably won't make that in this. Um, I don't think this car can go 170. Maybe it can. I don't know. Maybe I'll. Let's see. We'll just go try that real quick. I like to use analog throttles for analog sticks for the throttle, and then the um, R L L2 R2 for um uh for uh gear shift. And um, I use right. Oh, this is a right-hand drive. Interesting. I like to play inside the car a lot of the time. Um, it'd be cooler with VR. But, um, you know, for this video's purpose, I'll uh, be kind of use outside the car view. A little less realistic, but you get to look at the sweet-ass car you're driving. This game is pretty ridiculously beautiful in 4K Ultra. Oh, whoops. Okay, so that was 70 miles an hour. So I need to turn around. And uh, got to find a good straight run at it. 64 miles an hour. Some of these you got to come at from a long way away. But you got to kind of avoid traffic. And like that, so now I've probably smashed my car up to the point where I've probably degraded its speed. But here's what we'll do. We'll go down here. And it, Australia is driving left, so that's annoying too. You can change it, but I figured I'd leave it just for the authentic experience. Alright, so if this isn't enough, I don't know what is. This is probably way better done in like a Lamborghini Aventador, which is a well over 200 mile an hour car. And is also like 10 times the price of this at this point. So we're going to stay in our lane. This is a little tough because we've got traffic there and there's a... Oh, maybe we won't stay in our lane here, but... Um, no, there's no way I'm going to make 170. It's a complete joke. But I'd have to drive for several more minutes. But hey, maybe I can beat my previous... There we go. 116. Uh, I don't know if I beat it, but that's cool. Just check out the map here. Uh, there's bucket list events. It's kind of uh, um, events with specific uh, vehicles um, doing crazy things. Bucket list blueprint point. I'm not sure what those are. I can't remember. I've done a lot of these things that are grayed out. East Bid, Bridge Scramble, Circuit Race. 80 mile an hour, 135, personal best, uh, 97, street race, that sounds kind of cool, maybe I'll just drive through there, there's a drift zone, those are pretty tough, drifting is definitely an acquired skill in this game, oh no, here's a, here's a downtown street race, beauty spots, like a good place to take a picture, in the picture mode. When it is safe to do so. It's safe to do so now. With your emergency brake. Oh boy, you can trash all kinds of stuff. And you get points for messing stuff up in this game. It's pretty tight. This is, you know, I think Forza 7, Forza Motorsport Sport 7 just came out. You'd definitely like to get that. This game has a good amount of realism to it but also has some fantasy stuff like you know like speed traps and and getting points for smashing stuff up and um just some odd things that wouldn't be in like a really realistic racing game like some jumps and things no nah, this car will never get 270 miles an hour at least not in its current state which is Probably fairly messed up, from what I can tell. Uh, yeah, it damages a little bit on the front end. Is this the race point? We'll see. Oh yeah, it's 213. Byron Town Throwdown. You have arrived at your destination. Hmm, interesting. This NSX has a Honda badge. Instead of an Acura. So you go here, you set the... Uh, you can kind of tweak the difficulty and type of opponents. I think these are just single player. They're basically single player. Although there is some aspect of this game to um, 
the, uh, something something they refer to as drive avatars, um, which is um, uh, it like kind of measures how different people online and your friends play, and then it kind of and the cars they prefer, and it kind of puts like a you know rendition of them in the game, um, kind of tweaks AI some. So let's we'll see. I'll just start this and see how good it goes. Now I, I think my car. I'm not sure if it repairs it for this or not. Oh boy. Oh, I got a bad start. See, Soldier Juice is up there, but that's not really him. It's just the fact that we both play the game. Oh, I bumped him. The man, this must be unrestricted because there's like a... There's like a... Uh, a Ford EcoBoost truck right there. Huh, that music thing. I wish I could get that off. Oh, there we go. I don't really want any music on. Oh no. Actually, the radio stations are another thing you kind of build. Like you, you, um, as you get more fans and race points and build up your festival sites, it, uh, you can get more radio stations unlocked. Kind of neat. I think it automatically sets the time of day that it wants for each of these races. Let's see if I can get competitive here again. I'm 12 out of 12. Oh, traction control. Oh no, did I miss that? I think it gave it to me. Uh, yeah, this is um, this is like an off-road one. This is not good for an NSX. So sometimes you do these events, and then you um, you figure out what might be a better car for them. There aren't really any tracks per se. There might be a few race tracks in the game in locations, but um, now we're making progress. But mostly, it just kind of makes paths through the open world. All right, we got some time here. All right. We're climbing. Oh no. Oh no. Never mind. We lost it. I think there's like a rewind feature or something you can enable, but I didn't really like that. It seemed really cheaty to me. It's not something I want in my racing game kind of really interrupts the pace. I think it's to help prevent you from getting way out of contention. Um, oh, I missed a checkpoint. It's going to put me back, I think. Uh-oh. Oh, that sucks. So now I have absolutely no chance of coming in anything better than 12, but I haven't played in a while. Um, yeah, there's, there's a rewind feature. I, I don't... I've never used it, really. Um, seems lame to me to like race and then you make a mistake and you like rewind and then don't make the mistake. I don't know. To me, it's kind of like mulligans in golf. You know, you, you want a, the discipline to be able to do it well and actually, um, you know, have the accomplishment. So, we get the money. Not much for not winning. Um, get fans. XP. Oh, it's leveled up. Nice. What do I get? Anything? There's like a little gambling feature. Uh, I've never won anything good. Oh, hey, I won a car. Nice, a mini for S Horizon Edition. Anywhere else on Earth. They're custom-built for the festival, and you'll earn bonuses whenever you're behind the wheel. 
credit booth. Hey. This game is pretty good at uh, kind of the rewards, endorphins thing. Oh man, look at that. That's really cool. Having some fireworks and lasers over there. Freaking lasers. Let's see what do we want to do. Oh, got a barn find coming up. Job and go looking for these things full time if I didn't already have the best job in the world. So let's check out that barn find. Now it's probably going to be good to change cars to go find it because you're going to be plowing through the back, um, back country. So yeah, that's what it does. It gives you like a purple circle, and you have to kind of, you have to kind of find it. You have to um, go. You don't know anything except it's in this circle. You can kind of follow the roads and look for buildings. So probably what I'll do is I'll warp to this other site, grab a decent car for that, and then drive there. So um, fast travel, 6,800 credits. So it's like, okay, that's kind of equivalent to what I just got from winning that race. Or just participant trophy, millennial, outcome-based. So. Oh. Enter the site. It's annoying to go do a barn find with like a sports car. It's low. It has no traction. Could take the uh, Escalade. I usually take the Land Rover. Uh, or that one. I'll take the Jeep. That'll handle it. This is like a super sporty high-end Jeep. You can buy this in real life. The SRT edition is like 60 grand. Oh, which is kind of like um, the um, upgrading features. You can do different things. Um, customization. Well, all right. So you can activate some of the, you can open the hood. Look at that. Look at the rendition of these engines and these. High, you know, some cars are high, you know, high detail models, and some are lower detail models. A lot of them are the high-end models, meaning um, really a lot of rendering going into them. Pretty awesome, right? So, I want to show you a little bit about the upgrade system. Uh, yes, yeah, so you do upgrades, and then you can do auto upgrade. You can save upgrades, body kits, do custom, and then you just kind of go through different categories: engine, brakes, platform, drivetrain. Tires and rims, aero, uh, aerodynamic uh, pieces, conversion, major, major upgrades. I haven't done much of that, but um, you can paint and you can do different things. Okay, I got intake, throttle body, manifold, fuel system, all the cool gearhead stuff. It's cool to do. Um, fun to tweak with, and you can up the performance. Uh, you try to get some really good performance out of. Um, you know, by spending, you know, whatever you're trying to spend or trying to limit the money or, you know, or just go balls out. Conversion, engine swap, drivetrain swap, aspiration, your turbos, superchargers. So, let's go for this barn find. Still nighttime. Wow, that is a pretty sick looking Jeep. I wouldn't have been sad to have a car like this either, but I'm pretty happy with my bends. Okay, so let's find this. We already oh, we did a plot a course. I usually just plot a course in the middle of it and then kind of check out the roads. Hopefully it'll be something cool. Turn left. This is actually a really great car for going off-road because it's super upgraded. Um, I mean, I didn't, well, not anymore, but uh, it's super upgraded, um, kind of factory high-end model. It's nighttime, kind of lame, but oh well. I think the cycle goes pretty fast. But yeah, it's uh, you know this thing can handle the off-road, but it's also 
stupid fast. So it help, it allows you to kind of plow through and do what you're going to do. And I always have manual transmission on these games to make it interesting. Oh boy. That's okay. It was just a Miata. We, yeah. There's quite a number of backfires. It's kind of like in um, GTA 5, which is kind of annoying. I don't prefer backfires, but very rarely. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how common they are in really high performance engines. Probably kind of common, but it's just kind of annoying. I like to just cruise along. I, you might be able to disable them. I'm not sure. Oh boy, wow. I didn't see that coming. Turn left. Man, that engine sounds sweet. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. Uh-oh. There we go, see now the sun's coming up a little bit, it doesn't last that long. Not nearly as long as in Ghost Recon. Whoa, boys! Okay. Sure hope this recording's going okay. Let's find this barn find. It's kind of cool, it's kind of like a treasure chest. You don't know what you're going to get. And it's, some of them are a little tough to find. I've done pretty good on most of them. This one, some of them are just right off the road. Um, like, you just gotta kind of go into the area and see where there might be a building. So I see a, Turn left. I see a building. I'm just gonna drive through here. And it just kind of automatically stops the game when you find it. This looks like it could be it. We'll just plow through his fence. Nope. Ah. Let's just plow over some fence. To have fun. Oh yeah. There, that's what you get for hiding your hiding your car from me. Have fun fixing that. Oh, there's a that's like a board you can smash to get, make your fast travel cheaper. Hmm. Here's some more stuff inside the purple circle. Yards, turn left. See how annoying this would be with, uh, you know, other than an off-road capable vehicle. There's an XP board. Give you some XP. Smash that. Like, keeps track of how many of those you find in the game. Hmm. Ooh, there's a bucket list of anything. I've already done that one. Recalculating route. Hmm. It's force, force feedbacking my controller a lot right now. Some beautiful sun effects. Ooh, here's a barn. Come on. Is this it? No, you just gotta drive by it. Um, it's really all it should take. In 100 yards, ah. Turn right. Beautiful Australian outback. 200 yards, turn right. I've discovered 263 roads versus Soldier turn Juice's. When it is safe to do so. 100 and something. Wow, it's a game I've accomplished more at than some of you guys. It's amazing. I know. Come on. Could this be the one? <gasps> this is a barn! Uh, nope. Ooh, another board, though. In 100 yards, turn right. 
Do I have to destroy this entire place? They usually have something to do with the road. Let's see. Look at them. Look at the map here. Um, there's some driveways. They usually aren't. Well, that looks like. Well, I'll put a uh, a waypoint back the other way. Yeah, you can bust down some pretty big trees. Oh, come on. Tell me that's not it. Maybe this. I've probably already been here. Of course, I have you on for a, a tough one. There's only 20 of them in the game, so I've already done 11 of them. This would be my 12. Okay, let's try down here. Yards. Turn left. Just gotta scan the horizon. But um, here's a good barn. Come on, this is it. Right? Nope. That's it. I'm issuing a county-wide proclamation that if you don't have the awesome barn find car for me, super easily, I'm going to plow down everything in your yard. Ooh, here we go. Oh, there's a board here. We'll get that at least. You have arrived at your destination. Hmm. Here's a little barn. No cars in there. Hey, Brad. I've heard a lot ah, of things about this driver. That's a recruited drive avatar. You can recruit different drivers to drive for you. I'm not. You have to chase them down and beat them in a race first. Not going to do that right now because we're trying to find a car. Uh, let's try. Let's try up there. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Calculating route. Man. Ugh. I'm right on the edge here of the, the purple circle. This one's a tough one. That tree's too big to knock down. There we go. Finally found it. Cool. See what it is. They even show the cars in their busted down state. Ooh. Last V8. What is that? I can't even tell. It's like... Oh, cool. It has a big-ass blower. Turbocharger coming out at the top. That is sweet. So, that will go. And it became nighttime. Um, set the bomb. Uh, yeah, sorry about that outburst. It's an Australian thing. I'll get it cleaned up and report back. I think it's going to need a little more than cleaned up, but um, I think that's where I'll stop the video for now. Probably going on 30 or 45 minutes, something like that. Another XP board. Ooh, 5,000. Oh, what? You drive through. I guess you gotta be nice and drive through there. Uh, come on. But, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it inspires you. And, whoops. I don't want stupid Microsoft overlays. I don't know what's going on here. Whoa, no, no, no. Buying DLC. Horrible Microsoft stuff. I wish it would just go away, but I think it's a pretty awesome game. Cool looking game, fun game, kind of chill. 
racing game. So, uh, all right, signing off. Have a good one. Peace.